Okay. Um, fine. So the the issue that we'll take up first in this uh, this sugya is the issue of uh, of coercion. So the Gemara tells this story that first it says memashkenin alatzdaka that you can um, take people's money as collateral to force them to give tzedakah. Shabbat, and then it tells the story that Rava once forced Rav Nathan Bar Ami and took 400 zuz of staka from him. Right. So this is in the middle of our broader discussion about the um, the government collecting funds for the poor and the discussions of us being able to use coercive means for that. Um, right. That was right at the beginning. La Sial that the people who violate the guild rules or the city rules, we can punish them. So the Gemara tells this story about that happening with Staka. So what's the, what is the problem that plagues all the Rishonim on this Sugya? For even to what degree? Yeah, thank you. How can you coerce Staka? I mean, the Gemara seems to indicate that we are coercing staka. How can we do that? And what's the Gemara's problem? Why, what's the Rishonim's problem? Why don't they think that you should be able to coerce staka? Very good. So the Gemara in Chulin tells us the following. That there is a principle which you may find disturbing, which is called kofin on mitzvah say. Now, kofin is not the same as punishing. Punishing is after the fact, right? If whatever, uh, take a name, I don't know. If Jack um, eats pig and there are witnesses, Yaakov and Yonatan see him about to eat pig and they say, Jack, you should know that if you eat pig, then we will... You have violated a law, you have violated a negative prohibition in the Torah, and the punishment is lashes, and he says, I know, with full knowledge of what that entails, I am going to eat the pig. So then, Yonatan and Yaakov bring him to Bezdin. The Bezdin is made up of, I don't know, whoever wants to be on the Bezdin. They testify, and if the testimony is accepted, so then you, right, take a whip, right, and you beat him, right, a maximum of 39 times, or as many times as he can handle up to the, lo- the rounded down to the, di- to the number which is divisible by three, so that you can split them evenly with a two-thirds, one-third split on his back versus his stomach, right, Okay. That is what it is. The end of Moscow tells you that is punishment. But when it comes, yes. Before they get doctors and they say, "How much do you think you can handle?" And then they round down to the divisible by three. If if they see that he's dying, they stop. If he dies by accident. No, they don't. And if he dies, and if he dies by accident during, it's not the fault of the Shleach Beis then, because what can he do? Fine. But that's for a Lot Asay. But what about an Asay? So an Asay, if you don't perform an Asay, is there any punishment in court? No. But if someone refuses to perform a Mitzvah Asay, Jack, not only does he like eating pig, but he doesn't like taking the Lulav. And he doesn't like saying Shema. And, uh... So then, what's the halacha? Kofin uh, Yep. You beat him until he does it or, or expires. Yeah. Right? No. No. You beat him within an inch of his life, right? Well. Yeah. Kofin. We coerce. 
Um, but the Gemara in Chulin tells us a story. What's the story in the Gemara in Chulin, or what's the case the Gemara in Chulin introduces? Right. Yes. Yes, that there indeed is. Well, okay. What what is the definition of mitzvah kibbutz avayim according to the Gemara? Ezu kibbutz machelu mashkeu mavisho. Yeah, exactly. So the Gemara tells you the story that there was a a person who would not honor his father and mother. So what did they do? Yeah, well, they tied him up to beat him. And what did Rami Bartamre say to them? Leave him alone. Not because we don't beat people to perform mitzvot. We're totally fine with that. Um, the Gamre, right? But this mitzvah, we don't. Why not? delineates the, the reward the, in the Torah itself. So it's as if God is saying, look, I'm taking care of this. The God doesn't want to take the mitzvah so he won't get my reward. You don't have to deal with it. Right? That's Rashi's very simple analysis of this. Okay. Yes, Ezra. What are they? Mila and and Karben Pesach. Fire. So in that case, you, yes. But that logic that Rashi was able to apply there as well. So why why didn't it make sense to okay the punishment based on the Um I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll I'll, I'll look around. Okay. So tell us what his problem is, right? It's a good question. I I, I think about it. So Tosin says what? Tosin says, well, here's the problem. If you look at the Psukim, what, are, what do the Psukim say? Good. So the Torah delineates a reward for the mitzvah of Staka. Now, Gavi noted to me and say there, is that really true, Gavi? It's not totally clear that that's true. Because it sounds like the reward is specifically not necessarily for giving staka, but for for having the right attitude when you give staka, right? So you could challenge this entire understanding and say that this is not a matan sarvatita. Matan sarvatita isn't for the giving of the staka; it's for the attitudes, it's for other things. But the giving of the staka doesn't have matan sarvatita. That's not the answer in Tostos, but we can come back to the answer. But let's hold it, okay? But this is the question that everyone wants to deal with. Okay? So, let's, before we actually read Tosvos, what do you think? Right? Assume that we have this rule of, um, right, we have this rule of, 
Saka. We have this rule that Kol Mitzvah Seisha Matan Tzchare Bitzida Ain Kol Fanalav. And then we have this story in our Gemara that they, in fact, coerced. Right? Rava, in fact, coerced. Um, uh, who was it? One second. Uh, Rav Natan Bar Ami to give Staka. So, you can quote answers from Tosus, but if I ask you logically, how would you deal with this question? Right? What are the logical possibilities?
Coercion. Those are not the same thing. Okay, okay. What prohibition? Who said there's a prohibition on coercion? Okay, good. So, good. But let's right. But let's start figuring it out. Right? Is that the Gemara in Chulin clearly says that there are certain things which are right, exceptions to the rule of um, right being able to coerce. Saka seems to fit that rule. In the end, it's not. So, so okay. You can give me answers to Tostos, but let's start thinking about it. Right? What? Okay. Good. Someone wants to put their, throw their hat in the ring. Good. Gavi. So, the
isn't at all matan tzchara betzida. Right? It's the attitude which is matan tzchara betzida, but not the mitzvah. Right? So, so far we've seen two answers. Right? We've seen the re, which we understood in one of two ways. Right? The re said the reason you can coerce is because there are love in present, which we either said is you're coercing on the prohibition, which seems strange, or the existence of the prohibition to bolster the assay transforms into a super assay, and that's why you can be kofa. Or Gavi's formulation, like Rulachunstein, which is, no, 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 Staka is not a Matan Tzchar What's unique about Staka is that, in addition to the Masa Mitzvah, you have an added command to avoid bad attitudes. And for that added emotional challenge, God promises you extra reward. But the giving of Staka itself is a run-of-the-mill Mitzvah. And doesn't have Matan Tzchar And can be coerced. Yes. Yonatan Ezra. It's possible that the attitude is not just about not giving begrudgingly, but is giving, you know, giving b'shefa, right? Giving more. It's possible, right? It's possible that you could read it that way. It's possible. Right? It's definitely possible. Um, okay, but that's two possibilities. Okay, both of these possibilities share something in common, which is that they think fundamentally you can coerce on staka, right? that the conclusion of our sugya is that you indeed can coerce on staka, right? That is, right, both versions that we've just read, both the versions of the re and Davi slash Rebbe Chumstein, both assume that Limaskana you can coerce on staka. okay? That's two answers. Okay, what else might be going on here? And I don't, I don't bind you just to tell us the answers. If there are answers you already thought of that are, we haven't seen yet, that's fine. I just didn't want to overwhelm you with my cover. But good. Ezra, tell me, theoretically, what else could, how else could you answer this? That's fine. Say again? Yeah. All right, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. So let me let me broaden what you said. Okay? So Ezra says, methodologically speaking, okay, well, let's 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 take a step back and talk methodologically what we're doing. Okay? We have a seeming stira. Our Gemara tells us to coerce. The Gemara in Chulin says you can't Mazanskar Bichida. So possibility one is, despite the fact that it's Matan Tzchar Betzida, this is an exception to the rule, right? Who says that? Possibly the Re. Possibility two is, this isn't Matan Tzchar Betzida. Who says that? Gavi, right? You're very humble, Gavi, but you didn't know Rav Lechemstein said it, so you get, you get to claim credit for it too. Yes, Gavi and Rav Lechemstein both independently, okay? So methodologically speaking, right, you can either say, right, let's just think methodologically, right? You have one sugya that says you can, you, we are coercing staka. Another sugya says you can for matam scarbatida. So possibility one is accept both premises. 
that you can coerce for staka and that it's matam shara betzida, but call it an exception. Right? That's the read. But methodologically, what else, what are the more likely ways of solving the problem? It's not matam shara betzida or, or this is not kviya. Right? Right? Those are the two, right? Those are the two main methodological directions, right? The re is actually fascinating because the re says, no, no, it really is Matam Sarbatida, right? And it really is Kviya, but it's an exception. But the, the easier logical directions are to reject either assumption one or two, right? Which is either we can force for Staka or Staka is Matam Sarbatida. So Gavi slash Rebluchenstein rejected assumption two, which is you can, right, it is not Matam Sarbatida, right? The Matam Sarbatida is about the attitude, not about the mitzvah of giving. And therefore you can coerce, right? Because you're coercing for the, to actually make them give, but not on the attitude, which is where the reward lies. Then there's a whole, but there's another approach, which is to saying, no, 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 you can't actually coerce. Now, the problem is our sugya says you can, and therefore what do you need to do? It's a different type of coercion, right? It's coercion, but not the coercion you're thinking of. Several answers in Tosas go in that direction, but now Ezra is weighing in on that methodological direction, right? So again, we have three types of answers, right? Ones that will challenge the assumption that we're actually talking about Kviya, one that will challenge the assumption that staka actually falls in the category of Matan Shara Betzida. Or three is ones like the Re that accept both answers and come, right, Mibachutz, and say, we're taught, right, it's an exception, right? We will see other ones that will, that will fall in category three, right? But Ezra is now throwing it, his, his hat into the ring with the claim that this isn't really Kviya. Now, he makes a claim that maybe the only type of kofen that you can't do is the beating type, right? But maybe monetary one, you can. Now, you want to say that what's the reason? Okay, so one is the possibility of reversibility, right? So, right, Ezra says maybe one reason to distinguish between monetary coercion and Physical coercion is reversibility, right? I think that there's a lot to what Ezra is saying, but I think he can push it. I think you can push it even more. It's not just, there's something else here that's not just reversible that I think is very plausible here. Okay, so, God, so Ezra is saying, oh, and when it, once it comes to money, Besden has extended control. Okay. Good. Okay, but I think there's also, there's, I think there's even one more reason why you might say that the issue here is more, that monetary coercion might not break the rules here. What? Good, so the, the reason to believe that maybe the kfia here just means kfia by collateral, which we know you're allowed to do, because that's what Gamara says, right? But give me a good reason why you might and this, by the way, I think is just a tweak on who? Rabbeinu Tam. I think what Ezra is saying is essentially a tweak on Rabbeinu Tam. Right? Where Rabbeinu Tam says in answer one, that high kviya bidvarim kamo kviya. Right? So, and, right, Tosin just says the kviya we're talking about here is verbal coercion, meaning chastise them, bad bad good so it's so it may be verbal coercion so it could be that rabbinic time means exactly what ezra says which is since we already know that the gemara said you're allowed to take his property what it means is we take your property and yell at you until you agree to give stock up but we don't actually beat you right so it could be that ezra is a variant on rabbinic time it could be that that ezra is the same as rabbinic time right but i think there's more to it right i think it's not I think there's a very good reason to say, let's say Ezra plus Rabbeinu Tam slash Ezra is Rabbeinu Tam, 
not in the Gilgal sense, just in the position sense. I don't know if you're a reincarnation. I, I, I make no claims. Um, but I, I think there is one more reason to, 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 I think there is something else which really pushes in the direction that Ezra is saying, and I, I think, and that is, yeah, meaning that the difference here is it's a monetary obligation. So, right, meaning we're, what we're doing is we're taking the money and yelling at you until you agree that this money should be going to the poor people. It's not just about reversibility. It's that it's a monetary obligation where if we, we're allowed to take your money, and then, as Rabindranath says, we just keep yelling at you until you say, okay, 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 take the money and give it to Staka. It's not that it's reversible. It's that we are actually facilitating your performance of the mitzvah in a, in a way that we couldn't if we grabbed your hands and made you shake a lulav, right? That's not, right, we can't do that in quite the same way because if we're shaking your hands, we're shaking the lulav, right? Not you, but... If we take your money and we yell at you, you, we agree. We are facilitating the performance of an actual monetary mitzvah, but that's not really coercion in the thing, in, in, in the sense of maybe that's where Abana Tom's getting at. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What? Second answer of any time. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, 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 okay. Let's be careful here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ezra, let's be careful. What's the second answer of any time? Very good. So Rabinu Tom tells you. Good. So, Rabbeinu Tam, in his second answer, is Mechadesh what? <laughs> so, okay. I want you to be careful, Yonatan. Good. So, Rabbeinu Tam's second answer, okay, let's tell you what Rabbeinu Tam's second answer clearly is. According to Rabbeinu Tam, is our sugya about Kofan al no. no. This has nothing to do with Staka. Right? The fact that this is about Staka is accidental. It's about, it's accidental, right? And therefore, this teaches us nothing about Staka. Why are you able to be Kofa in this case? Okay, see, Yonadan is running already to the Ketosa right? Which is a very good person to be running to, but it's not what Rabbeinu Tom says, right? Rabbeinu, and I want to distinguish it. What did Rabbeinu Tom say? You happened to have agreed in this particular case, in this city, to agree to that this right the rules of this city were that anyone who lives here must accept the possibility they will be coerced to give Saka. What does he say? The Hacha Kiblu. E here Kiblu and Jacobo the Magabai. Here they accepted that they should be forced. So therefore Abin Tom's second answer is again, methodologically speaking. Can you be co file stuck or in Tom and answer two? No. Is right, is it Matan Skarbatida? Yes. Is this thing here Kvia? Yes, but like the re, he says it's an exception. Why is it an exception? The re says it's a, a, a fundamental exception to the nature of the mitzvah of tzaka, 
Rabbi Tom says, no, it's an exception because... Yeah, you agree. It would be like if, you know, everybody in, uh, I don't know, 49 was having trouble getting up for chakras. So you told Yudi, we agree to give you permission to beat us until we get out of bed, right? I might get sued for, you know, saying such a thing. But from a halachic perspective, right, from a halachic perspective, you would be within your rights. Yaakov's like, this is a terrible idea. And Al-Kharami is a terrible idea. I didn't say it wasn't a terrible idea. I'm just saying theoretically. I, I, I don't know if I should... Uh... Well, oh, but now, Yehonadan's mind is already jumping. He says, Yehonadan says, wait, 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 wait. Yehonadan says, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Rabbeinu Tam, Rabbeinu Tam, Mechilat Kvot Aratcha. You're the smartest of all the Baliyatos, but you're the sharpest of all. You introduced the entire methodology of distinctions. He is the father of Tosavis Bilpul. And you answered it with a technicality that in this particular city, they happen to have agreed that they be, could be coerced, right? There's a much better answer, which looks like that answer, but is a thousand times more fundamental, right? That's what Yehonazan wants, is bursting to say. And what does Yehonazan want to say? Go, Yehonazan, what do you want to say? Well, that's even farther than I thought you were going to go, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, no, 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 no. Actually, no, that's not fair. Okay, so Yehonadon says, well, wait a second. We've already seen the possibility that in certain cases, the commitment to give staka means that the poor people already own it. So maybe you can say that the poor people own it, and therefore we're forcing them to give what's theirs. Now, Yehonadon, I'm going to give it back to you before Ezra. Oh, Ezra doesn't like it. So before Ezra challenges you, I'm going to give it back to Yehonadon, and I'm going to ask Yehonadon, you tell me what is weak about that answer. I think you overstated your claim. I think you're, you, what you're saying is plausible, but you've got to tweak it just a little bit. Yeah. Why? Okay, but, but start out why. So I, I would come at it from the opposite, ang opposite angle. But basically, I would say, look, when did, the Gemara, when did we talk about that? Were you already committed to a specific poor person? So then they own it. But this is quite far. To say that conceptually, because I should be giving staka, a specific amount of money is already owned by the Ani, and that's a little bit much, right? Because, yeah, if I really own the money, so... You know, right? This is not about coercion. All admits, well, not, right? That's not what this is about. But let, uh, there are two ways that you could say what you said: slightly more modest, slightly less ambitious, right? Which would, which would, right? Sound very similar, right? What are they? I'll give it to you again. Take what you said and soften it just a little bit to to not fall into the trap that Ezra just highlighted. Ezra, you want you want to you want to attenuate his claim. What is it? Oh, like that's one of the main figures that I didn't actually give you the Gemara inside. That's Rosh Hashanah Dafav. Okay, cool. So I think would it would it would it give me or would it work again? Okay, I think you're gonna have to look at Rosh Hashanah Dafav because now that you're asking about it. You'll have to look at it. So I'll leave that and let you see Rosh Hashanah Dafav. Okay. Okay, it looks like your brains are all working now to, to think about this. So I'm going to leave you then. I'm going to leave you, and I want you to think, so, so far, what we've seen. Okay, again, I want to outline the methodological possibilities, okay? Remember, our Gemara says you force by Tzaka. Daka seems to be a matan skar betzida, and you're not allowed to force for matan skar betzida. There are three types of answers in this sugya. Those that say 
we're not really talking about coercion. Those that say staka really isn't a matam tzara betzida, or those that say that staka is indeed matam tzara betzida, but you can coerce, and within that, right, it's an exception. You can either have fundamental exceptions like the re, or localized technical exceptions like Rabbeinu Tam, right? The re said this is a unique type of mitzvah say because it has lot says to bolster it. And Rabbeinu Tam says in this particular case, you happen to have committed to live in a city where they would use coercive measures to make you bake staka and or wake up for chakras. I mean, whatever, right? Just, no, just staka, just staka. Right? But the answers that we will say could fall in each of these categories, but I will tell you the two that, that I didn't get you yet, I sent it to you now on the WhatsApp, but you haven't looked at yet, are the Ridva and the Ksot. Right? Both of them are going to fall in category three. Right? Of saying that maybe Staka is a Matan Skarabitsida. But you can be kofa, right, for reasons X, Y, and Z. One of them, Yehonatan said earlier on that I thought he was going to bring his answer, but he didn't. So he forgot apparently what he said, because it was a very good answer, and it's going to be the ksot, right, which is what I've been driving into your head over and over again, which is that our sugya is more complicated than just being about staka. It's about something else, right? Very good. So I want you to flesh that out. That's what the Ksot is going to do. And then the other answer, which is what Yehonadon almost went at, is, is in the Ridva, which has to do with, I will hint to you what it has to do with, right? We talked about it a little bit in Shear, but that is models of ethics, right? That there are different types of values in ethics. There are deontological values. There are virtue considerations, and there are utilitarian and consequentialist ones. I will leave that for you as the Ridva's answer, that the Ridva weighs in here that Matan Tzara Betzida applies to mitzvot that have a certain type of rationale behind the mitzvah. I will stop now. And our Shilgit, which about coercion, is about another one of those pantheon of values that mitzvot might have, and the limitation on kriya is only on one of those types. Don't answer, don't tell me what you think now. I want you to think in those philosophical terms and tell me what the Ritva means. Yonatan, you have the last word, but I have to, I have to cede the floor. Yeah. Well, what? Well, so that's what I thought you were saying. Was the Ketot was saying that Rabbi Tom said, in this city we happen to have committed. But you could have just gone half a step farther and said, no, no, no. Correct. That this, it's not that you can coerce on stucca. You can coerce on taxes. And sometimes things that look like stucca are really taxes. In a nutshell, that's the ktsot. But I want you to see the ktsot inside. Thank you. That's what I thought you were saying, Yonatan. Right? That's recognizing that our sugi isn't about stucca pure. It's about social welfare. Right? Where it, board, it straddles the line, as we already saw in the Rimigash from Yonatan, between stucca per se and and taxes. Taxes are something, by definition, you can coerce for. Very good. So, Yonatan, you've been mechavin to the ksot. We'll have to see it inside on Sunday. So, read the ksot. And the Rijva is the philosophically minded one. And we still have one more answer in Tosfut alone. Right? That, that at least brings us to seven, seven, eight answers. I don't remember. I, I think there's eight total. But, um, okay.